The Hellenistic Age is the period of ancient history that extends from the conquests of Alexander the Great in the late 4th century BC down to the conquest of the Greek world by Rome between, let us say, the mid-2nd and the mid-1st centuries uh, BC. How the Hellenistic period traditionally ends with the Roman conquest of Ptolemaic Egypt, death of Cleopatra in, in 30 BC. Um, this is a world that's vastly extensive in, uh, in, in space, stretches from the Western Mediterranean out to the Hindu Kush mountains, the borders of, uh, of India, um, in the north from the Northern Black Sea region down to the, uh, down to the Persian Gulf. It's an enormously exciting period of ancient history to, uh, to study and to read about because one's talking about so many different civilizations coming into contact with the, with the Greek world. Um, the Carthaginians and Romans in the Western Mediterranean, um, the Egyptians and, uh, and Arabs in the, in the South, um, Persians, Indians and um, Bactrians in the, uh, in, in the Far East. The Hellenistic period is often described as a period of cultural globalization. Um, and you can see that simply in terms of the contacts between individuals, um, the kinds of life stories that one can tell um, about, uh, about individuals making their way in this vast, vastly expanded Greek world. Um, so, for instance, uh, one of the most exciting figures of the period for me is a chap called Eudoxus of Kidzikus, um, a native of northwestern Turkey, um, who around 120 BC, so in the later Hellenistic period, travels um, on embassy to, uh, to Egypt, to the uh, then Ptolemaic king, Ptolemy VIII Fatso, Ptolemy VIII Fisco, um, down in southern Egypt, um, near um, modern uh, Syene, ancient Aswan, um, uh, he comes across a, a shipwrecked Indian, uh, someone who's um, found his ships shipwrecked on the, um, on the western coast of the Red Sea. Um, Eudoxus realises, um, through, uh, through, through meeting and talking to this Indian, that it's possible to sail directly between the Red Sea and the Indian subcontinent. So shortly after 120 BC, he sets out with this Indian, discovers the monsoon winds, sails directly across the Indian Ocean to, uh, to India, returns with a fantastically wealthy cargo, all of which, alas, is confiscated by Ptolemy VIII. Um, a few years later, Eudoxus sets out again to India, and this time on the way back, is blown off course and shipwrecked south of the Horn of Africa, somewhere in modern Somalia. Um, he finds um, uh, among the, um, uh, the peoples of, uh, uh, of ancient Somalia a wooden ship's prow with depicted on it a horse, which Eudoxus realises is the um, civic symbol, the civic blazon of the city of Cadiz, um, ancient Gadir, at the um, uh, Straits of Gibraltar. So Eudoxus infers, or at least guesses, that it's possible to sail all the way from uh, Gibraltar in the western Mediterranean along a southern passage to the coast of Somalia. He ships out, uh, kits out an expedition to sail out beyond the Straits of Gibraltar into the, into the Atlantic, um, discovers the Canary Islands, um, is then forced to, uh, to turn back, but not before he's discovered somewhere on the west coast of Africa a people who, at least he believes, seems slightly implausible to us, spoke the same language as the people he came across in Somalia. And a little later, probably sometime shortly after 110 BC, uh, Eudoxa sets out again down the west coast of Africa um, with a, an expedition to try to find a passage to India um, uh, through the um, past the Cape of Good Hope and is, I'm afraid, never heard of again. Um, but this extraordinary individual's life, this man who starts off in northwest Turkey, travels as far as India, discovers the coast of Somalia, heads out west and discovers the, uh, the, the, the Canary Islands before disappearing somewhere in, uh, in West Africa. Seems to me a marvellous um, um, image of the kind of extraordinary lives and extraordinary connections that were possible in the Hellenistic age.